Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, we will see how to break a cascade of a monoalphabetic substitution cipher and a visionaire cipher. A viewer of this channel and a user of Crypto2 asked the question if it is possible to break such cascaded ciphers in Crypto2. And I thought at first it is not possible since we don't have any analyzer for breaking such ciphers. But then I had a thought of how to break these in Crypto2 and I built a nice workspace that actually allows to break these kind of ciphers. And how this works we'll see in this video. We structured this video into five different parts. In the first part we will have a reminder of the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher and you will see how this works. After that we will have a reminder of the visionaire cipher and you will also see how the visionaire cipher works. On the right side by the way you can see not the event inventor of the visionaire cipher but the one whose name was used to name the visionaire cipher. Actually Blaise the visionaire didn't invent the visionaire cipher but the auto key cipher. But we will see more on that later. Then in part 3 we will see how a cascade of simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher and visionaire cipher works. After that I will present to you the attack on this cascade cipher. And finally we will build the attack in Crypto2 and break the cipher also using Crypto2. What is the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher? When you are a subscriber of this channel, you probably know this, or if you're familiar with cryptology, you know what a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher is. But here's a small reminder. The simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher replaces each single letter of our plain text always by the same letter of a ciphertext alphabet that is defined by a key. Here you can see an example of two alphabets. We have the plain text alphabet. This is a standard Latin alphabet with 26 letters. And we have a ciphertext alphabet that is used to substitute letters. And as you can see, each letter that is located below the plain text alphabet in the ciphertext alphabet is used as a substitution. For instance, we have here the plain text, hello world, which is enciphered to a ciphertext ITSSG VGKSR. And how does this work? We have a look at our first letter here and to ease it for you, I colored all the letters in different colors. So we have the first letter H here and H is replaced by I. We look in our alphabets, we see here is an H, we write an I. The same we do for the E. E is replaced by T. We look in the plain text alphabet and search for E and below that we see the T. And we go on and on and on until we have encrypted each letters and we go on and on and on until we have encrypted each of the letters and we obtained our ciphertext. And this is how the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher works. Now let's have a look at the visionaire cipher, or more in detail, the classic visionaire cipher. And the visionaire cipher is a bunch of Caesar ciphers, which are shift ciphers, that are column wise executed on plain text based on a keyword. And if you don't know what a Caesar cipher or a shift cipher is, you may have a look at my videos about the Caesar ciphers on this channel. And the classic visionaire cipher was actually not, as I already said in the introduction, invented by Blaise de Visionaire. It was actually invented by Giovanni Battista Bellaso, but it was later named after Blaise de Visionaire. And he invented the auto key cipher, which is related to the visionaire cipher, but different. And we already had a few videos about visionaire ciphers on this channel. But how does the original or classic visionaire cipher work? Let's have a look at an example. We again have a plain text, but additionally to the plain text, we need a keyword. For instance, we have again, hello world, and our keyword is just key. And then we obtain our cipher text. And in this case here, it's R I J V S U Y V J N. And how does this work? We have a look at the first letter in our plain text. And we have a look at our keyword. We can assign numbers 
to the letters and to the keywords. For instance, our letter K is the 10th letter, so we shift our letter H from our plain text 10 to the right in the alphabet. So H becomes R. We do the same here for the E, but now instead of using the K as our key letter, we use the next one, the E. So we have to shift by 4. So E becomes I. We do the same with L, this time with our key letter Y, which is 24 shifts to the right. So we get the J. Now we are at the end of our keyword, so we just repeat the keyword again. So our next letter here is L, the green L in our hello world, and we shift this by K, meaning 10 again. So with key, we always have shifts 10, 4, 24, 10, 4, 24, 10, 4, 24, 10. This is what we call a polyalphabetic substitution cipher. We call this polyalphabetic because you can think of we exchange every time we use another um, letter of the keyword, we exchange our ciphertext alphabet. For instance, when we go back to the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher, of course, this is now not a shifted alphabet, but think of this as one alphabet and we could shift it one to the right. So when we shift one to the right, A doesn't become Q, A would become the M here, because when we shift the alphabet to the right, M goes here in, so A becomes M, the B becomes Q, the C becomes W, the D becomes E, and so on and so forth. And the Caesar cipher uses for these shifts not a um, transposed alphabet as we, had it, as we have it here, it uses also the standard Latin alphabet. And a visionaire cipher is just a bunch of Caesar ciphers that are selected by the visionaire keyword to create a poly polyalphabetic substitution cipher. Now, finally, let's have a look at a cascade of a simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher, which we, by the way, abbreviate using MASC and the visionaire cipher. And our cascade first encrypts using the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher, and then it encrypts using the visionaire cipher. And this is as easy as it is. And here is a more mathematical way to express this. So we have a plain text P, we have an intermediate ciphertext C1, and a final ciphertext C2, and we have two keys K1 and K2. And we have these equations here. So we obtain C1 by applying the monoalphabetic substitution cipher on the plain text using K1. Then we apply a visionaire cipher on C1, our intermediate ciphertext, using the key K2, and we get our final ciphertext C2. And of course, we have an example here using ciphers from our previous slides. Let's assume our plain text is hello world again. We first apply the monoalphabetic substitution cipher as seen before, and we get an intermediate ciphertext, which is ITSSG, V, G, K, S, R. Then on this intermediate ciphertext, we apply our visionaire cipher using the key K2 in our example on the slides before this was key. And we get our final ciphertext S, X, Q, C, K, T, Q, O, Q, B using the visionaire cipher. And finally, here's a hint. First using the monoalphabetic substitution cipher and then the visionaire cipher is the easy case. And first using the visionaire cipher and then using the monoalphabetic substitution cipher is the difficult case. Why this is the case, you will see later in this video. Now let's have a look at an actual attack on the cascade cipher. First of all, we have a few observations. We can first break the visionaire and then we can break the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. This is possible. And we can do this by a divide and conquer attack. And now you could ask yourself, why does that work? And this works because the simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher keeps the so-called index of coincidence or IOC of the plaintext. We already had a video about the IOC on this channel. The IOC is a statistical value and it helps us yeah, to break ciphers and to, de to detect plain text or transposed plain text. And 
The IOC of a text is a probability of randomly drawing the same letter two times in a row out of this text. So you have a text, may it be encrypted or not, you randomly choose a letter, let's say we choose the letter N, and then again you choose another letter, and the probability that that second randomly chosen letter N is, or the letter is N, is the IOC. So the IOC is a probability. And for each language, the IOC is a little different, but the IOC is very different when you compare plain text and cipher text. And now let's have a look at the attack. First of all, the idea is to brute force the visionaire. Keep in mind, the visionaire has been used after the monoalphabetic substitution cipher, so we have to break it at first. And as I said, we use a brute force attack on the visionaire, but this is not very efficient, so we use a more efficient way of, you could say, <laughs> brute force. We use a dictionary attack, meaning we search or we go through a dictionary of English words, for example, and test each of these words as a keyword. Then we decrypt the cascade cipher using the visionaire and we get our intermediate cipher text. But we don't know if we used the correct keyword from the dictionary attack. But the correct keyword or key will give us the intermediate cipher text C2 with an IOC of the plain text. Because as I said, the IOC is a probability of drawing the same letter two times out of a text. Now think of monoalphabetic substitution cipher where each letter is just replaced by another letter, but an A is always replaced by the same letter, a B is always replaced by the same letter, a C and so on. So when you use a monoalphabetic substitution cipher on a plain text, the resulting cipher text has the same IOC. So when we decrypt our cipher text using the visionaire cipher and the IOC tells us this here is now a plain text or a monoalphabetic substitution substituted cipher text, then we know we have the correct keyword. And when we found the correct keyword using the dictionary and the IOC, in the second step, we use the substitution analyzer of CT2 to break the remaining simple monoalphabetic substitution cipher. The substitution analyzer internally uses, for instance, hill climbing, and it easily can break monoalphabetic substitution ciphers. So finally, we get P from the analyzer. Now, after a lot of theory, let's do it in practice. And let's attack the cascade cipher in Cryptool 2. I'm here now in the start center of Cryptool 2. I use the nightly build of Cryptool 2 and I want to break our cascade cipher. But before we can break the cascade cipher, we first have to create a sample ciphertext. And to do so, I first search for the monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And we have a substitution cipher here, substitution cipher monoalphabetic, this template here. Let's just open it. And then we want to encrypt a text, a test text. And we have some requirements. And I, for instance, don't want spaces. I don't want all these special characters and so on. So we have to clean up a little our text here. And to do so, I just use um, this here. I have a string operations component and I want to have uppercase letters. Then of course here we don't want all the um, lowercase letters in our alphabets and I just randomly shuffle the ciphertext alphabet so that we have a nice monoalphabetic substitution cipher here now we don't need the decryption okay so what do I do here at first I um, change the test ciphertext here to uppercase using the string operation component. The substitution component should only encrypt um, letters that are in our alphabet. So I want to remove the wrong letters, you can say, like spaces or brackets and so on. Here we have our source alphabet, our plain text alphabet. 
And here we have our ciphertext alphabet. And when I now press play, we have a nice monoalphabetic substituted ciphertext generated using Crypt2.2. This is our first cipher that we apply. And after that, we want to encrypt using the Visionaire cipher. So I go to my templates in the Start Center. I search for the Visionaire cipher. Then we add the, uh, the monoalphabetic substituted cipher text here to um, the template. I also remove the decryption. And we need a keyword that could be in our dictionary for our attack. And for that, I use automatic. That is probably an English word that is part of the dictionary that we will use. And then when we encrypt our intermediate ciphertext here, we get our final ciphertext. Let's have a look if this is encryption. Classic visionaire encrypt automatic is a keyword. So here we have our ciphertext. And now we want to break it. And to do so, we create a brand new workspace by clicking on new here. Let's enter our text here. And this here is now our final cipher text. Let's call it C2. And we know that this is a visionaire cipher. And we want to break it using our dictionary or a dictionary attack. So we first search for dictionary. We have a dictionary component. The dictionary component we set to English. Now we need a visionaire cipher to analyze, or well not to analyze, to break <laughs> the cipher text. Here we have the external alphabet, so we could exchange that, but we don't want to do we, we don't want to do that. And we have here our shift value or our keyword. The dictionary, of course, gives us a dictionary output, which is a list of keywords. We have to go through this list. For that, we have to create a loop. So we need a number input. We start our loop at zero. So we have a number input and I call this zero. To create loops in Crypt22, we use gates. So we have our gate here. We put the zero into the gate, then the zero will go through the gate and it will yeah, come out of the gate. And to always let it come out, we say we want no trigger at all. That's right. Then we have to increment the value here. And I exchange the input and output um, positions on that increment here. So this increment here will do a plus one by right clicking. So you can right click a connector and then, for instance, change it to here or right click and drag it to here. Then I connect the input and the output here. And now we have an endless loop. And when we now put here in our text input, wrong, <laughs> or text output, we can see that it will count. So let's test this. So you can see here a number that counts up. Why do I need this number? This is our loop here. I need this number because we can query the dictionary. And let's think of which name is it component. Uh, I th ah, yeah, array indexer. So the dictionary here gives us an array. The array goes into the array indexer here. And then we can um, query that by putting a number into that array indexer. Now let's have a look at this. We should now see all English words from A to the end since the indexer indexes our array and the loop go through that array. We can now use these words as keywords for our visionaire cipher. The problem here is that these words have to be written uppercase since our visionaire works on uppercase letters. So we have here string operations. We have to write this to, uh, to upper. And then we have another problem. Our keywords here in the dictionary that we will use will also contain 
non-alphabet letters. And we have to remove these. So I use second string operation component. And for debugging, I put here a text output. And I need the regex replace. And our regex replace will um, replace string two. String two is this input here. Since we connected string one, we don't see here string one, but it will replace from our string one all um, occurrences of string two by string three. I leave the string three empty because I want to remove everything. And all I want to have is A to Z. And I want to replace everything that is not A to Z. Let's have a look if this works. And here's a small problem. Instead of putting the not inside the reg X, I have to put uh, outside, I have to put it inside. Let's have a look. Yeah, this works. Now the reg X replaces everything that's not part of the alphabet. So here we have our keyword. Now let's use this keyword with the input of the Visionaire cipher. Let's put here our text output. And now we should see a lot of decrypted, oh, this is encrypt. <laughs> we should change it to decrypt. We see that it decrypts the Visionaire using all these different keywords. And now we have to check if the decryption is monoalphabetic. And to do so, we can use the cost function. And the cost function gets our text here and it computes a double value. And the double value will be our index of coincidence. So let's change this to index of coincidence. I want to use all letters, so I change it to 1000 here, despite we have 331. And then we need a threshold value. The threshold value will be 0 0.06 because the index of coincidence for our plain text should be above this value. Then we have to compare this. And we have a problem here <laughs> since I used a text input for um, for the um, double value here. So we have to convert this. This is a text to double. So we can convert here with our converter to double. And I think this is a German system. Maybe I have to change this to, let's have a look here, text output. It could be that I have to change this to a comma because I'm on a German system. Yeah. On an English system, you need the point or the full stop. Here I need a comma. And then <laughs> it changes this to a double value and the double value then here gets a point. This is funny. Okay, let's remove this. And when our value is above our threshold here, so this is the IOC threshold, then let's, let's also name the other components. So this is uppercase, this is um, regex remove, regular expression move. This is English dict. This here is our loop. Every index is fine. Comparator, I just change the name to greater than 0 0.06. And now we need another gate. We connect this gate here and we say this gate will only forward with a true value. Then we connect our Visionaire, the deciphered or decrypted um, intermediate text to our gate. And now we need a text output here. And this will be our intermediate cipher text. Oh no, um, C1, not the intermediate. Oh, yes, this is the intermediate cipher text. Now let's give it a try. Hopefully it works. So let's have a look at the Visionaire. 
And here, yeah, I have chosen, I will stop this right now. I've of course chosen automatic since I know that automatic is at the beginning of the dictionary. So in this video, it does not take very long. I created the same workspace already and it also works with other um, entries of the dictionary with other English words, of course. And you see here we have X, B, D, O, T and so on. Let's check if this is our intermediate ciphertext. And yes, here it is. So let's compare it. I put it here. So you see, this is the exact intermediate ciphertext. So our dictionary attack here that searches for the correct visionaire keyword finds the intermediate ciphertext. And now all we have to do, I will um, zoom out a little. We need our monoalphabetic substitution analyzer. And this component then is able to also get the intermediate ciphertext. And we will have our final plain text here. Oops, let's connect it. So this here will be our plain text P. So let's finally start it again and see if we can break the cascade cipher. Now it's found the intermediate um, ciphertext and it, it partially deciphered. It deciphered it, but we have a problem right now. And I know what this is. We have to change here to not use spaces. So we have hill climbing here, not use spaces. And let's test it again. Yeah, and as you can see here, we have our plain text. In cryptography, I will change this, make this a little bigger. In cryptography, a substitution cipher is the same method of encryption by and so on and so forth. So, as you can see here, we can break a cascade of ciphers. First, the visionaire cipher we break with a dictionary attack, which is, by the way, the second cipher in this cascade, of course. And then we break the monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And this can be done using components from Cryptool2. Now you could ask, why is this the easy cascade and not the difficult one? It's easy because we can first break the visionaire and then break the monoalphabetic substitution cipher. This cost function here tells us when we found or gives a good value, you could say, when we have is still monoalphabetic substituted cipher. This is because we reverted or we, we broke the visionaire cipher here or we removed the visionaire layer from our cascade. The problem is when the visionaire is the first cipher we used and then the monoalphabetic substitution cipher, we cannot find a still polyalphabetic substituted intermediate cipher using this cost function component. So we cannot apply a dictionary attack or for instance, a hill climbing attack on the monoalphabetic substitution cipher easily here in Cryptool2. And by the way, this is also not only with Cryptool2, this is a more difficult problem to find a still polyalphabetic substituted cipher text. If we could so do so, we could easily then first decipher or search um, the keyword of the monoalphabetic substitution cipher or the alphabets and then use the visionaire analyzer in Cryptool2. But this, as I said, is a difficult problem. But if we have, or when we have a cascade of first monoalphabetic and then visionaire, we can first rip off the visionaire and then the monoalphabetic substitution cipher. And I think this is everything that I wanted to show you in this short video. I hope you liked it. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you're interested in more videos of this kind and you're really into cryptography, I highly suggest that you subscribe to this channel to see my new videos on this topic. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.